kind of not but uh to stand Jesus, Father. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and that you would move upon each and every one of us here, Father. You know our hearts and you know what we need to do, Father, and what it is you want to do. Father, I pray that you would move upon us this night and that your Holy Spirit would move and would breathe on us this night, Father, and let your presence be known here, Father. And I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your name would be glorified, Father, that your name would be magnified, that your name would be praised, O Lord. And I just thank you for it, Father. And Father, I give you everything, Father. I give you everything. All that I have, Father, it is yours. And I thank you for it, Father. Now fill me with your presence and do whatever it is you want to do, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sit down. I want to encourage you today. I was thinking, what can I say? You know, we have a good pastor. He's a good teacher and a good preacher, and I like to hear him preach. And I was thinking, Lord, what could I say, Father? What could I say to encourage the people, Father? And, you know, I started thinking about faith. Faith, you know, and if I could title this, I would title it Unmovable Faith. Unmovable Faith. And, you know, in the book of Hebrews, it says, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse yeah, verse 1, no, I'm sorry, verse 11, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1 and 3, it says, this, for now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, all you know things are not as though they were, and it says, you know, and I'm sure that I'm reading it correctly, as you can tell, I'm probably a little nervous up here. But let's go down. It says here in the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world was formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, we look at faith and in I looked up the word faith, and, and you look at in Webster's Dictionary, it says, faith is believe in God that you cannot see, or to put hope in a person or a thing. You know, <clears throat> we as Christians, we understand that faith is our foundation to believing in who God really is. Like the Bible says, now faith is the substance of this hope. What is it that you are hoping for? What is you are desiring from God. Faith will go and reach what you cannot do and bring it into your existence. Faith is a substance. Whatever it is that you are believing for, faith is the substance of that which you are hoping for. And when you believe and you pray and you ask God to do this, the Bible says it is faith that brings it into, exist into existence and not we ourselves. Faith is not based on us, but it is based on our belief in God and who he is. You see, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I don't know if we understand that when God spoke everything into existence, he spoke it by the word of his mouth. God himself had to believe that if he speaks it, it's going to come to pass. And the Bible says that God spoke the world into existence. You see, my Bible says the only thing that God bent down and created from the dust was man. If you read the Bible, everything was spoken into existence. Excuse me. Except man. Man was the only thing that God created from the dust of the earth. 
But even though man was created from the dust of the earth, God had to believe that if he breathed into man, that man would become a living soul. You see, I want to encourage you today that you can believe that whatever God says he's going to do, he's going to do. Now, I know a lot of people said claim it and name it. That's not faith. A lot of people, they want to claim it and then they say, oh, you claim it, it names it. No, the Bible does not call that faith. Your faith will be tested and will be tried. It's not going to be a walk in the park. You can't just stand up there and say, I claim it, so it's going to happen. Sometimes it takes time. It takes time to see what God is trying to do in our lives. You know, Brother so uh, who was the evangelist that was here two, three weeks ago? Bill James. Bill James. <clears throat> Bill James said something over me and I've never talked to Bill James but probably once since I've seen him in two years but there is something that nobody knows that I am praying for nobody here nobody outside of this building there is something that I've been praying for that only God himself knows what it is and when I came up here and I began to talk with Brother Bill James. He said, God is going to use you. And he began to go into details. But then he stopped. And he said something. That made me stop in my tracks. Because then I began to realize. This man. I've never talked to him. I've only said, hi, how are you? But I've never sat and ever talked to this man. But here he is. Telling me what I've been praying for. And it, 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 it brought such joy. And the thing was, God was saying in time, what you're asking will come to pass. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to continue to pray. You're going to have to fight for what it is you're wanting from God. It is not... <coughs> A walk in the park. So many times. I get excited. We. Want to think. That this walk with God. Is a bed of roses. <clears throat> it's not a bed of roses. It takes faith. To walk. In a way. That God has called you to walk. It takes faith to walk with an invisible God, a God that you cannot see, nor can you touch with your physical hands. But inside your heart, because of the word of God, you believe he is real. You know, there was three children. We call it three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. In the book of Daniel, it talks about them in chapter three. I can't go through the whole entire story because it is a big story. I can only touch a few. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were children from the Jewish nation that was, that was, that was ca in captivity by, by the Babylonians under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, if you read the story in the book of Daniel about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will understand that these three Hebrew children, that they were taken into exile by the king Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar, in the story in chapter 3, you will read that there was a time when King Nebuchadnezzar, he built an idol to please himself. He built an idol and he had all the people in his land. All the rulers in his land to come and bow down to this idol. Well, these three Hebrew young men, probably in their early 20s, maybe, or mid-20s, he gathered the best Hebrew children and he taught them the 
ways of the Babylonians and he put them all in certain positions to rule his government. So he brought all the rulers of his government into a certain place where he built this big old idol and he wanted them all to bow down to it. But these two, these three young men, the Bible says in chapter three, in verse 14, it says this. Now Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, OK, first he ordered them all to bow. But these three did not bow. They were stubborn enough. They had such an audacity that they served God so much that they were not going to be moved. Even if anybody put them to the death, they were not going to bow to no one. They believed in an invisible God. They believed in God. They believed that there was, they were taught, somehow they must have been taught as children that there's a God in heaven and that you serve him and him only. That you don't bow to nobody else. You only serve God and God alone. And these three children who are now adults, they understood that. And they had such faith in God that even if the king was to threaten them, that they were not going to bow to the king, nor to his ways, nor to the rulers of that world in that time. So when the trumpet in the story, if you read that they blow a trumpet and everybody bowed, but the Bible says these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did not bow. They stood there while everybody else will bow. Let me tell you something. Faith will cause you to go against the tide. Faith will cause you to stand up for what is right, to stand up for what is holy, to stand up for what is pure. Faith will not allow you to do anything outside of God's will. But see, the king, he was so proud of himself that he wanted everybody to bow. But when he was told that these three young Hebrew men did not bow, he got furious. He got mad. He got angry. And the Bible says he called them and the king spoke and he said these things to them. And Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? Do you not serve my God nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the saxabut, the, the sorcery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, he said, in other words, well, if you don't, in other words, but he said, well, but if you, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast that same hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? You see, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what trial you are facing right now. You may be facing things at work. You may be facing things at home. And your enemy may be staring at you eyeball to eyeball, face to face. And he may be asking you, where is your God? Because you stand in your faith and you believe that God will change your circumstances. Sometimes God would allow circumstances to come into our life just to see what will we do. You see, this king said, if you don't bow to my God, and to the image I've created, I'm going to cast you into the fiery furnace. And the Bible says these three men were standing there. You see, sometimes life will come at you and life will dare you to do what you shouldn't do. Sometimes life will come at you and hit you so hard to see what you're going to do. You see, you have an enemy that wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. The Bible says Satan comes, but to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
You see, this king wanted to have his way. He was so convinced that there was nothing anybody can do to stop him from doing what he wants to do. Isn't that like the enemy? Isn't that like Satan? He is so convinced that he can do whatever he wants. That there is nobody that's able to stop him. But my Bible says, but my God, but my God shall supply all my needs. And the Bible says, I like these three young men. And it says this. Let me see. In verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, and I like what he said. I have my page folded. O king, Nebuchadnezzar. You see, sometimes you got to put everything in order. Sometimes you have to look at your fear eyeball to eyeball. Sometimes you have to look at your, your trials and whatever it is you're going through eyeball to eyeball, face to face. Sometimes you're going to have to, what we would say in Texas, have some grit. And you're going to have to stand there and you're going to have to hold your ground. And no matter what comes your way, you will not surrender. You see, I like what they said. Oh, king. They said, oh, he said to the king, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this way. In other words, we are not going to back down. We are not going to stop. And you're not going to make us bow to your God. And you're not going to make us bow to your image. And we are not afraid to answer you this way. He said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, shall be able to deliver us from, from, from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. We have a God who can do the impossible. We have a God who is able to deliver us out of your hand. But I also like what they said in the next verse. They were so convinced. And it says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image thou hast set up. Not only is our God able to deliver us, not only is our God mighty, not only is our God able to destroy you, but because he is sovereign and because he is God, he can do whatever he wants. And if he chooses not to, we still will not serve your God nor worship your image. You see, these guys had some backbone. They were not yellow. They didn't run when the fight got hard. They got stubborn. They got bold. They got strong. And they said no matter what, even if God chooses not to, we will still serve God. And we still will not bow. You see, we are living in a generation and a time where we need to have some backbone. It's not going to get any easier because my Bible says it won't. Now, we need to understand, and this is where I sometimes have to encourage myself. As a Christian, there's nothing wrong being strong. There's nothing wrong having some backbone. If you read the Bible, everybody who shook the world was strong. You had the apostles. How the Bible says these men turned the world upside down. 
You had King David who fought Goliath. God ain't looking for no little wimpy person. God don't want nobody weak. God don't want no little weak person. I mean, I played high school football when I was in high school. When we played football, the coaches did not put the weak ones in. He kept them on the bench. They were on the sideline. They were the bench warmers. They were the ones who never did nothing. They had to clean his uniform because they were not able to do what the strong ones could do. But he kept all the good ones and all the strong ones in the game. And that's how we would win the game. We had to endure. We would go four quarters because there was no substitution. We would have to struggle through the games. We had to do it all the time in the cold, in the heat. And in Texas, it gets 110 real fast. And also when the sun gets down, it'll hit 35 real fast. So you had to adapt to your situation. Sometimes as Christians, we have to be strong and be able to adapt. No matter what comes our way, we have to be, we have to be stubborn enough to say, I am not going to back down no matter what comes my way. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to love God. And I will not walk away from my faith. I encourage you this day, be strong in the Lord and in the Paul says this, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of faith. But before he says put on the whole armor of faith, he says be strong in the power of his might. That tells me before you can put the armor on. You got to be strong in the power of God. You got to be strong in the power of his might. You just can't put on the uniform and not be strong. You got to be strong. Just like when you play football, they make you go through off seasons. They make you run. They make you do exercises. They put on weight. They make you eat. Why? Because before you can put that uniform on, you're going to have to make the team. And before you make that team, you're going to have to prove that you are strong enough to be on that team. And that's the same way as a Christian. You can't just walk this walk and call yourself a Christian and not understand that there is a living hell out there that is waiting for you. There's a demon out there that wants you dead. Satan don't care one thing about you. He wants you dead. And if you're weak, he'll take you out. The Bible says Satan goes to as a roaring lion seeking who he may defile or confile. He's not going to attack somebody stronger. He's going to, oh, if you, if you look at anything about wildlife and about how animals that they hunt, they always hunt the weaker animal first. Less fight, they get more to eat. A harder to fight, they get less to eat. So they know if that animal's not going to fight, he's pork chops. He's bacon. He's steak. They're going to take him out. That's the same way as the enemy. If you're weak, he'll take you out. You got to be strong. And the way you get strong is by reading the word of God. It's by living what God has called you to do. Oh, eight o'clock. <laughs> you know, I had, I'm a, I'm going to do one more, but I'm going to very phrase it. We're going to talk about in five more minutes. I'll be gone. You look at Jesus. The miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. The Bible says Lazarus was dead four days. Four days. Jesus stayed where he was, which was not even a day's journey. And he told the apostles that it was, I am glad for your sake that we didn't go when they called him. Martha and Mary called Jesus to come heal, his, heal their brother. Jesus stayed where he was because God had a purpose. Sometimes God does not come when you want him to. He's never early. He's never late. He's always on time. He didn't go. Lazarus died. And he told them, let's go wake him up. They all thought he was asleep. But he said plainly, Lazarus is dead. 
He got over there to see Martha and Mary. And Martha met him first and said, Lord, if thou would come earlier, my brother would not be dead. And Jesus said, Martha, your brother shall live again. And she, was, she understood about the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the truth, and the life. He that is dead, yet shall he live again. And he that believes in me shall never die. <laughs> Painted her a whole picture of what he was about to do. People miss the, the miracle that what God did on that day. We all realize that God raised up Lazarus from the dead. But what got me was he was dead four days. His body was decayed. He had no eyeballs. He had no brain. He had no heart. He had no blood vessels. He had no blood veins. He had nothing. His body was decayed. The Bible even says it, that, Mark, that Mary said he stinketh by now. He's been dead four days. They understood this body was no longer a body. How are you going to raise up this body that is no longer there? No eyes, no hair, nothing. Gone. He's dirt. Jesus told them, move back to stone. Impossible. Unmovable faith. The Bible said that Jesus prayed, Father, he prayed that God would hear him. And he thanked God, but he did it for the people's sake. And he knew that God was going to hear him. The Bible says he, he looked and with a loud voice, and I'm not going to scream because I don't want to blow your ears out. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And I always wonder, I had friends who would tell me, do you know why he had to say Lazarus? Because if he would have said come forth with the authority that he has, everybody in that grave would have came up. Everybody from Adam, everybody from Noah, everybody from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have came out of the grave because God had the power to raise up whoever he wants. So God had to get personal. He had to get specific because he understood. I got the power to do whatever it is I can do. And when he said, Lazarus, come forth, there was a miracle that was created. He made new eyeballs, a new ears, new teeth, new lungs, new heart, new blood vessels, new veins, new arteries. Everything had to be created by the word of his mouth. And Lazarus came out, the Bible says, hopping. When God speaks, it just takes one word to change your circumstance. No matter what you're going through, you can go through anything in the world, but it takes one word from God to change everything. It may be late on our calendar, but on God's time, it's right on time. It takes one word, one word to change everything. So I encourage you this day that you serve a mighty God. You serve a big God, a great God. And he can change every circumstance in your life. And I am through. And I don't if you need prayer, anybody who is not a Christian and you want to be a Christian, we can pray with you. Everybody would please stand. For those of you who are not a Christian, but you want to serve God, you want to be a Christian. The Bible says that if man confess with his mouth and believe that God has raised Christ from the dead, he shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, and with the mouth he confesses. So if everybody here, I don't know who you are, if you want to be a Christian, if you want to serve God, please raise your hand if you're not a Christian right now. But let us all pray this prayer. Everybody together, say, Jesus, come into my heart and forgive.
forgive me for all of my sins and save me. I believe in you, Father, and I thank you in Jesus' name. And if you need prayer, 